I'm here in Southern California at the Santa Susana Field Observatory site, known as Rocketdyne, where the U.S. space program tested rocket engines, nuclear reactors, and conducted liquid metals studies. It just so happens that right behind me in the center of this observatory lives an ancient astronomical Shumash site. Who are the Shumash? And what was this site known for? The Shumash were among the natives of the southern coast of California for almost 11,000 years, not only living in connection with the Earth, but in deep conversation with the stars. In the middle of this field observatory lives the Shumash cave paintings, said to be connected to the winter solstice, and created as early as 1200 AD. It was here that archaeologists believe that the winter solstice ceremonies took place. The winter solstice was an ominous time for many ancient indigenous cultures, and it was no different for the Shumash, for they too revered the sun. The winter solstice ceremony consisted of a dance, prayer and offerings meant to help prepare the tribe for the coming winter. But the main focus of this ceremony was to entice the sun to turn back and ascend into the sky. The Alchuklash, the shamanic figure of the tribe, would remind the tribal members to respect the sun and to live a good life in harmony with nature, for the sun was always watching. In order to prepare for the coming year, the Alchuklash would inform the tribe of any planetary and celestial events that were about to take place and make predictions about the future. Could these cave paintings be predictions about future events? And was the winter solstice a celebration created around the same time as these cave paintings? A story by Vincent Brown, who spent years living among Native Americans of various cultures, wrote a story that portrays the life of the Shumash hundreds of years ago and gives clues as to why the cave paintings were created and what some of the images could have represented. The Alchuklash, also known as the Silent Ones in the story, lived isolated in the hills overlooking the rocky coast of California. The Silent Ones were known to hold great power for they could communicate with the animals and travel through the astral realm. In the story, the Shumash are portrayed as having a dream culture where the Silent Ones would be in a deep trance. When they awaken, they would paint their dreams. They would not tell anyone the meaning of their dreams, which created a mystery around the paintings and reverence among tribal members. The story describes the circles of the painting as having great power, which can produce harmony. These circles inspired the tribe to live in harmony with all spirit beings, especially the Great Spirit of All. Similar to the story, the Alchuklash were known to use mescal beans, or peyote, to facilitate deep shamanic journeys. Edward Krupp of the Griffith Observatory and leading expert on ancient and modern astronomical systems believed that the shamans or the Alchuklash conducted his ceremonies and stargazing alone or with the help of a few attendants. Because the solstice shrines were not necessarily a suitable place for large hosts of gatherings, he points to our modern observatories as evidence that these locations were not likely able to accommodate for large groups. I was curious to know whether these cave paintings gave any hints of what could be perhaps a revelation or a premonition. And although many archaeologists visited the Burrow Flats cave paintings from the 1940s to the 1990s, speculation about what the images might have represented are not well documented. So I examined the cave paintings for myself and used the tribe's practices and culture to give me some insight. On one end of the panel, there are rings lined up to make a chain, which ascend to meet this image of the sun. The Chumash believed that if you were not living in harmony with the plants and animals, the sun was watching you and it would eat up your soul. So this image could represent the souls that the sun eats up throughout the year, souls which are honored during the winter solstice celebration. Notice there are two chains of what might be ascending souls. If these circles do represent souls, then does this image indicate a time when many people were going to be passing away? The most prominent figures in the mural are these white painted figures with appendages that branch out like claws. Some scholars believe they could represent an animal or anthropomorphic figure, but when I looked at them, I couldn't help but think of barren trees, like trees during the winter time. The stems look like tree trunks with leafless branches reaching out from the base, and just below the stem, there are roots. Was this vision about a time when the trees wouldn't be producing? Was it a vision of dark times? Dark times were certainly ahead, but did the Chumash know this? 
The first recorded encounter of native Californians and Spanish was made in 1542, and this was the start of Spanish colonization and Christianization of the native peoples of this land. As Spaniards and Americans came flooding into California, the Chumash lost their land, their native language, and many died from violence and disease. If these paintings were predictions of future events, they came a few hundred years too soon. More research would need to be conducted on these images using image processing technology in order to understand whether these images show any signs of an invasion. In order to get a better glimpse into the past, I did what the ancients did, and I looked to the stars. As you can see from this location, the view is amazing and perfect for stargazing. I was curious to know what the skies looked like back when these paintings were said to have been created. So I did some investigating and I mapped the planets to the winter solstice in 1250 AD, imagining what the skies looked like some 700 years ago. During this time, December 21st, 1250 AD, the planets were illustrating a very interesting perspective. Now, I'm not a professional astrologist, so the scope of this astrological interpretation will be limited and somewhat general. However, I did my best to interpret what life might have been like for the Shumash tribe and what compelled them to express themselves through paintings and astronomical alignments. Pluto was in the constellation Scorpio, and this signifies looking deeper into situations to see what's going on behind the scenes. Which brings an intense energy, a time of collapse, a time of coming of age during societal change. Saturn, Mars, and Mercury share space in Sagittarius, and all these planets combined, with Saturn dominating the house, brings a drive to solve problems with an open mind towards new ideas. With Venus and Jupiter conjunct in Aquarius, awareness of our place in community and humanitarian issues arises, accompanied with a desire for freedom of expression. So this could explain why these cave paintings began to pop up. Uranus was entering Pisces, bringing a willingness to dispose of old habits and adopt new ones as our perspectives begin to shift. And finally, Neptune in Cancer encouraged the people of that time to follow their instincts, firmly understanding what was needed to achieve their goals. It was likely a time of great societal change and an evolution in consciousness. To further this claim, between approximately 1050 and 1250 AD, the sun was exhibiting major solar activity, known as the medieval maximum. Every 11 years or so, the sun goes through what's known as a sun cycle, which is when the sun's magnetic field starts to flip. This causes all kinds of things, higher levels of solar radiation, ejections of solar material, solar loops, sunspots, and solar flares. In other words, the sun is noticeably active during this time. Perhaps ancient cultures like the Chumash perceived this violent activity from the sun as manifestations of the sun's anger. Is this the reason why the winter solstice ceremony was initiated to begin with? According to Alexander Chizevsky, a biophysicist and heliobiologist, Earth and mankind are greatly affected by the sun's solar activity. He states that during the solar flares, humans would experience various diseases in epidemic proportions. It could be that during the time that these paintings and winter solstice ceremony was initiated, the Shumash were suffering from a great outbreak of disease. Perhaps that's why they felt it necessary to honor the sun and pray for his return to the sky. Maybe those who died from the disease are depicted in the cave painting at Burrow Flats. It just so happens that right now in 2021 and since the beginning of 2020, the sun has reached that 11 year cycle once again. Perhaps Chizevsky is right about disease and the sun cycle and maybe the Shumash discovered a way of keeping them from suffering through the cycle. After all we've been through in 2020 and 2021, it's a great time to get in touch with Mother Earth and the cosmos. As an Alchuklash would say, none of us in the assembly control our destiny, for we live in the shadow of the sun. We might never fully uncover the mysteries of what these images truly represented, but based on astronomical events, we can strongly suggest this was a time of a great shift in consciousness, influenced by the placements of the planets and the activity of the sun. It's no wonder why the ancients sought the knowledge and wisdom of the stars. They understood that as above, so below. 
Today, the remaining members of the Shumash tribe are seeking to help preserve the knowledge and wisdoms passed down to them for so many centuries and to preserve the Burrow Flats cave paintings. Please visit wishtoyo.org today and see how you can help save a part of California's history. Thanks for watching.